Theater 5, show number 42, The Wrong Arm of Justice. The opening teaser runs 25 seconds, ends with theme up to conclusion. There's a two-second break here for the first commercial. The first act runs 9 minutes 23 seconds, ends with a cue, I'll present the evidence, followed by a music curtain. There's a two-second pause here for commercials 2 and 3. The second act runs 9 minutes 37 seconds, ends with a cue, They're Always Wrong, followed by a music curtain. There's a two-second pause here for commercial number four. The closing follows and contains full credits. The show feed will begin five seconds from now. William Reed is going to be tried again. It won't do any good, Major. He's going to be tried, convicted, and executed. And it'll be done legally, as legally as possible. Theater 5 presents The Wrong Arm of Justice. Check with me first, Alice. But the last person I want to have dinner with tonight is your father. The brave district attorney. Well, Alice Reed's acquittal hit me hard enough without having the major season my food with his ideas about the case. All right, just turn the car around and drive home. Father will understand. Only too well. Thanks a lot. Well? All right, I'll sit and listen to his gaff, even if it chokes me. You didn't talk that way about Father when he was helping you get your law practice started. Or when he helped get me elected district attorney. Okay, remind me to thank him again, and again, and again. If you can't be grateful, at least be smart. Father's just as ambitious for you as you are for yourself. He feels deeply about your defeat in court. It couldn't have hurt more if it had happened to him. I don't have any intention of calling off my fight against Reed. Well, tell that to Father. I'm sure that's all he wants to hear. All right. Oh, Alice, why am I taking it out on you? I'm sorry. Keep your eyes on the road, Jay. Are you sure you won't have another glass of wine, Jay? No, thank you, Major. Uh, You'll drink with me, Alice? Certainly, Father. It's not often you honor the old major with your company of an evening. Jay's been busy. Yes. Well, now that Reed is free again to terrorize the public, you'll have a lot more time on your hands. If you don't mind, Major, I'd rather not discuss the Reed case. He apparently bought off the jury. I have no proof of that. Come on, son. You presented an airtight case. If those jurors weren't bribed, then they were afraid of reprisal by Reed's gang. Listen, the next time... Never mind. Oh, go on, Jay. I said I don't want to talk about it. Jay claims he isn't going to stop trying until Reed is convicted. Oh, sure. I don't care how long it takes. I'll get him. Yes, that's what you said in the newspaper interview. Your statement was printed side by side with Reed's. His read better. Major, get off my back. I'm sorry, Jay. I I know the wound is still fresh. I did everything I could. Yes, everything you were permitted to do. Okay. Okay. Let's rehash all my mistakes. Tell me how you would have handled the case. No, Jay, no. I can't find fault with your prosecution of the case one bit. You made mince pie of Reed's defense, and your summation was brilliant. I was proud of you. Thanks. But unfortunately, your effort was in vain. He got to that jury. I thought he might. Major, I'll say without reservation that I believe Reed bribed or frightened the jury. But proving it is another thing. I've had each one of those 12 men down at my office. I promised them immunity. I promised them protection. Yet all of them swore they voted on the evidence. Ha. Should I have beaten the truth out of them? Well, that might not have been a bad idea. But I'll agree it wouldn't have done any good. Even if one of them stopped fearing for his life or the lives of his family, at best you'd get only a new trial. Then the same thing all over again. Decent people living in daily terror of that killer... 
and the law powerless to do anything about it. We are not powerless. You've got to fight fire with fire. Major, don't you think I get fed up seeing people like Reed go free? Reed's crimes are against the people, but it was my face that was pushed in the mud by that verdict. Maybe you like the taste of mud, Jay. Alice. No, no, no. I didn't mean this to develop into a family argument. No? No, sir. Now, we shouldn't be fighting each other. The enemy is William Reed. Let's turn our anger against him, and let's be selfish about it. Now, this acquittal is going to affect your career, Jay. Oh, you put up a grand fight, but Reed won. And after the dust settles, that's all the people are going to remember. You failed them. I did my best. Is that what you're going to say in your campaign speeches? That is, if the party doesn't dump you for a new candidate? Is that a threat, Major? Why should I threaten you, Jay? I want to see you get re-elected. Oh, excuse me, that must be a call I was expecting. Did you know about this, Alice? Did you know he was going to threaten me? The threat to your career isn't from my father. And you can keep that prosecuting attorney tone out of your voice. Save it for Reed. What does he want me to do? What does he expect me to agree to? Come on, there must be something... The party can drop me and run someone else for district attorney, but he didn't put it that way. He said, if they do. Now, I know your father well enough to know he's giving me an alternative. What is it? Ask him. Oh, I'm sorry we were interrupted. But from your looks, Jay, I suppose you'd rather change the subject of our discussion. I'm sorry, Major. I've got to get back to the city. Alice? Ask him, Jay. Oh, now, Alice, if Jay doesn't want to continue, if he doesn't care about his career... Are you coming, Alice? It's a pity you won't be given another chance to convict Reed. I'll get him to trial again. I guarantee that. Why, surely you don't think you'd be entrusted to handle the prosecution a second time. Now, look, Major. Maybe you can pull a couple of strings with the party, but as long as I'm still in office... Now, you have no cause to be angry with me, Jay. I'm your friend. And as such, I'm anxious to help you. And as your father-in-law, I want you to succeed. Why, if you play your cards right, re-election is only the second rung on the ladder. Someday you'll be governor. Major, I resent being maneuvered. And I dislike having to maneuver you. Then come to the point. All right. Now, I want you to listen to me without interrupting while I lay out some cold facts. Then you're going to have to make up your mind about something. Go ahead, just sit down and listen. William Reed is a cancer eating away at our city. You gathered the evidence. Murder, extortion, a dozen rackets. Is there a shadow of a doubt in your mind that the man is guilty? Certainly not. But you let him get loose again. And that statement that he made to the papers. <laughs> are these, these are the hypocritical words of a monster. Listen to what he said. All I want to say is that my acquittal reaffirms my belief in American justice. <laughs> justice! Major, every cheap hoodlum who beats a rap always says exactly. that. Exactly. They make a mockery of the law. And each one who gets away with it breeds more disrespect for the law, more violence, more terror. The public has a right to be protected. Now, Jay, you've said you know beyond all doubt that William Reed is guilty. In court, you asked for the death penalty. Will you admit that even if you could have him indicted again, will you admit that your chances of convicting him are almost non-existent? What does this have to do with... An honest answer, Jay. I don't know. If he got to one jury, he might be able to get to another. Aha! There it is. More failure waiting for you. Frustration. But the public doesn't want excuses. They don't want the law to fail them. They want to be rid of William Reed. Now you listen to me. I've stuck my neck out for you. I've assured some people that you want to see justice done just as much as they do. Now these are the same men who will back you all the way to the state house. Thanks again. Oh, don't be a fool. We want you to try Reed again. Present the evidence. This time he'll be convicted and executed. I don't think I'm following you, Major. Jay, we've got him. We've got William Reed. He's our prisoner. Your prisoner? What? Are you crazy, Major? You can't we get away. We can do it without you, Jay. Now make up your mind. 
You admitted you don't have a chance to convict him in open court. All right, but to take the law in your own hands, We I... have no choice. Alice, do, do you want me to do this? I want you to succeed. Well, Jay... When is this trial supposed to take place? As soon as we get to the farmhouse where Reed is being held. They're waiting for us. All right. I'll present the evidence. Reed's little hideaway in the hills for some time. So we figured he'd head there right after the trial. It was that easy. My 12-gauge shotgun did most of the talking. And you're sure that no one saw you leave that cabin with Reed as your prisoner? I told you that. And the only people that know we've got Reed are the four of us in this room. And Reed, he knows. Jay, why this concern with the obvious? Let's get on with what we have to do. It seems like the district attorney's heart isn't in his work. Oh, nonsense. Jay's asking legitimate questions. Now, don't worry, son. We've thought of everything, took every precaution. Reed's execution will serve as a warning to the rest of his gang that they can't escape from justice. We intend that his body's discovered. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and our district attorney's going to be stumped for clues. Right, Jay? Uh, first, we've got to convict this man. Oh, good. The committee is now in session. Henry, go get the prisoner. Why didn't Henry just shoot Reed when he had the chance? Why, he couldn't have done that. Uh, let's get something straight, Jay. We all believe in the law. This is being done as legally as possible. That's why you're here. To see that Reed is judged on the evidence. Yes. I'm here to see that Reed gets a fair trial. Look, you characters, if you think I'm going to let you get away with this... You... Shut your mouth, mister. Get in here. If it weren't for that shotgun, I... Well, the Boy Scout, the D.A. himself. The prisoner will sit in that chair. The prosecution will present its case. Prosecution? What kind of joke is this? The defendant will remain silent or be ejected hey, Silent? This... Who do you think you are? I'll get every one of you. I'll scatter your brains. Take him back to his room. Why, you, you boy scout, you got together this lynch party. Well, you're on the list. You'll be the first to Watch get it. Watch it, mister. This gun's loaded for buck. Now move. All right, Jay. Get on with the evidence and make it fast. The sooner we destroy that vermin, the better. Uh, he's locked up again. Let's get this over with. All right. Gentlemen, due to the extraordinary nature of these proceedings, I have no physical evidence to present and no witnesses to call. Therefore, you must rely on my memory of the facts contained within my files. I may be in error as to precise dates, names, and... Oh, we know that, Jay. Just get started. Are you all in agreement? I, uh, I want to be certain that in your minds you see nothing wrong with this procedure. Incidentally, this evidence was not presented at the court trial. I'll accept your words like I do the gospel. Tell us the facts as you remember them. All right. I charge William Reed with being an accessory before the fact in the death of Mr. James Russell. I offer that one Fred Logan, while in the employ and in behalf of William Reed did enter the home of James Russell and cause him bodily injury, which resulted in Russell's death. I further offer that Fred Logan made a full confession to the police in which he admitted he was ordered by Reed to extort money from Russell under threat of violence. Well, that's enough to satisfy me. Why, oh, it's incredible. That was one of Reed's crimes I hadn't heard about. If I may continue... We checked Logan's confession. You don't have to tell us any more, Jay. Well, I want to give more facts. Hmm? 
so that there isn't a shadow of doubt left in your minds about Reed's guilt. <laughs> that isn't necessary. I disagree. All of us are going to have to live the rest of our lives with the knowledge of what we're doing here tonight. Yes, he's right, Major. Go on, Jay. Thank you. And that concludes the case for the prosecution. Good, solid, and airtight. Well, gentlemen... All that remains is to pass sentence. Uh, just a minute. The prisoner has the right of the defense. What? Huh? What are you trying to We're do? We're doing this as legally as possible, your own words, Major. But what defense can that killer have? I don't know. Let me ask him. I'll present his argument, whatever it is, and then you can decide on his guilt or innocence. Oh, it's a waste of time. No, no. Let's hear Reed's story. It won't hurt to take another few minutes. Give me the key to the room, Henry. I'd better come along with a shotgun. Well, that won't be necessary. If he tries anything, I'll call out. A ridiculous delay. It's the proper legal procedure. Jay's right. Sure. What's the difference, Major? Reed's going to be dead a long time. <laughs> Name your price. Anything. Listen, you're the D.A. You can't join in a kangaroo court. You can't. You're scared. Well, you're sure right I am. This is crazy. Please. Please. You're finished, Reed. All finished. All right, Jay. Let's hear the defense, uh -huh. but make it brief. As counsel for the defendant, I move that this court be dissolved as being illegal and unconstitutional. Huh? <laughs> Motion denied. Proceed with the defense. Very well. My client denies the allegations. He contends he had no part in any crime concerning James Russell. In fact, he even denies having ever heard of James Russell. Right yeah. up to the last minute. My client also denies employing Fred Logan to extort money from Russell under threat of violence. Furthermore, he contends no acquaintance with said Fred Logan. If I may summarize. I contend that the district attorney lied, that he presented a false set of facts, that he described to this court a crime which didn't exist. John, oh. remember you said that it was a crime you had never even heard about? Yes. You were right. It never happened. I fabricated well, the whole thing. Well, how... You were all waiting to pass judgment without proof, just to ease your conscience. No, oh, no. I, I... This, is, this could be another pack of lies. Mm. You're acting as his defender now. Well, how do we know which version to believe? Order! Order! Has the counsel for the defendant concluded? I'm neither the defender nor the prosecutor, and you men are not judge and jury. You're on trial. We're all on trial. Yes, I invented a case against William Reed, just as I could invent a case against any of you, and in this kind of court find you guilty. I warn oh. you, Jay. We start with Reed, then who's next? Some innocent man whom we think is guilty? We know Reed is guilty of a dozen crimes. He's a menace to society. Not as big a menace as this court. All right. You've made your speech... But remember this, Jay. You're in this as deeply as we are, whether you like it or not. I vote Reed guilty as charged. Well, I... I don't know. If that wasn't a real crime that Jay described... That's not I... important. I... What? What's that? It's Jay's car. Moving out toward the highway. Jay, who can be driving your car? It's Reed. I left the room unlocked and gave him the keys to my car. You, you tricked were... us. You helped that killer escape. I kept three other people from becoming killers. That is, unless you're ready to put me on trial, Major. Come in. I, uh... I talked with Father Jay. Alice, I'm working. Oh. You're preparing the new case against Reed? Yes. Do you think you'll be able to convict him this time? If not this time, the next. But he will be convicted. Well, I... I know you're right, Jay, but... Father, wasn't he right, too? No, Alice. You can't have law and order by violating the law. 
A lot of men beside your father think the end justifies the means. But they're wrong. They're always wrong. <laughs> Theater 5 has presented The Wrong Arm of Justice, written by Leonard Stad and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, John Seymour, Connie Lemke, George Petrie, Mark Daniels, George Baxter, and Marty Myers. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, M.C. Brock. Original music by Alexander Vlostotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.